No one. What's up, Gator Nation? Welcome into the latest Gators Online show. Zach Albaverde, Nick Del Tor here, and we have a lot to get through on this week's episode. We had the first scrimmage from spring camp, pro day, and the Anthony Richardson show that he put on. Obviously, we had a new brick that went into the ground outside of Ben Hill Griffin Stadium in Florida baseball, getting into its SEC play uh, with the latest matchup this weekend as they host Auburn. Nick, I know you're ready for that, and I know we had a uh, busy day this past Thursday. How are you doing, my friend? Doing well. That um, I think that was probably the best pro day from a, a covering standpoint. So shout out to uh, Rick Hurtado in Florida. Um, it was able to see a lot more this year than probably the nine previous ones, and uh, a lot of people were there to see Anthony Richardson, and and uh, I think some of the other Florida players took advantage of that yeah. audience. Uh, that that was there to see Anthony, who only really needed to throw after uh, the the kind of combine he had. Yeah, it was funny talking to Richard Garage after his pro day workout, which was big for him because he didn't get to do that uh, in in Indy, and he was like, "Man, thank God for Anthony Richardson because he's given all of us a lot of looks uh, with all the teams that have been breaking down his film." So uh, we'll get into Anthony's performance and everything that came out of pro day, but I know you guys want to hear what Nick and I have to say about the first scrimmage and where we're at in spring camp, because we'll talk about what we've learned and we'll discuss kind of where the Gators are on both sides of the ball in terms of their depth chart. But the first scrimmage finally took place, Nick. It was the eighth one of camp and uh, the Gators got after it in Ben Hill Griffin stadium for the first time, Jack Miller, Graham Mertz, that quarterback competition played out in the swamp. Both of those guys got first team reps uh, the offense had some turnovers, so that's something definitely that uh, we took away from the scrimmage. But uh, what were some of the things that you heard through the grapevines as we were uh, gathering intel after things wrapped up? Yeah, I think um, a lot of people probably thought, you know, this might be the the scrimmage where Graham Mertz separates himself, where he takes the job. Um, I don't think that has happened quite yet. I think we're still in a competition. Um, and then the biggest thing for me is I think the defensive line is showing that it has some depth. Last year, Gravon Dexter played 60 plus snaps against Utah as a defensive tackle. Yep. He had the third most snaps of any defensive player. Your, your defensive tackle shouldn't have more snaps than one of your starting safeties. Um, that just shows the lack of depth that Florida had and how much they were putting on on Dexter. This year, I think with Cam Jackson, Chris McClellan, um, Desmond Watson, um, Banks, like the guys you have now, I think you'll be able to have a nice rotation and keep guys fresh. And you're not going to ask, um, you know, Cam Jackson to play 600 snaps this year, keep guys fresh. Hmm. And I think the depth on the defensive line uh, for me is going to be a, a huge thing for Florida and, and something they didn't have specifically on the interior last year. And we got to hear from from Billy Napier and, and you know, obviously guarded with, with some things that he said, but he, he did single out some players and he did reveal some of his takeaways about where he he felt like the team uh, performed. And uh, the, the typical there was some good, there was some bad and there was some ugly. Now, there there was some good now. And I think it's important that we start with that. I think the first uh, kind of highlight that came out of the scrimmage that came out from Gators football was the big touchdown pass from Max Brown to Aiden Mizell. Um, and even though that's the third string offense that made that play, uh, Nick, the, the Max Brown hype train just, just got some more juice off of that play. Yeah, I mean, uh, great play. And then the uh, in the same or in, in the very next tweet, they show him <laughs> throwing an interception. So, uh, I, you know, you see what you want to see. Um, I don't think that Max is um, – I think it's a two quarterback race. Uh, well, and and let's talk job. about you know what we learned this week, Nick. I mean, trying to, to ask about where Max stands, and we heard from some program sources that said, "Hey, this guy's got talent. He, he's he's got the skill set to play here, or he wouldn't be at Florida." This is a guy that's learning the position. He's mm -hmm. learning how to play quarterback. He, he's only done it for you know started what two years in high school. Also, a, a dual sport athlete. We know the time that he's put in with baseball. So, you know, this is a guy that, again, would not be here if he didn't have the skill set, but he's still learning how to play quarterback. You know, Jack Miller and Graham Mertz, they've, they've, learned, they've learned how to play the position. Now they're just trying to learn how to play it well. 
and they're tr- trying to learn how to execute the offense. Max is trying to learn how to play the position, and uh, and there's nothing wrong with that. Um, but there's going to be times in practice where he flashes and throws a deep ball or makes a great play with ha- with his athleticism, and that highlight might get out or some rumblings might get out, and you're going to hear fans, you know, let's see Max, let's see Max. But there's a lot of other things that he's got to do to put himself in that position. Um, and as you said, Nick, it, it is a two-man race, and based on what we heard from – the scrimmage, um, it's not been decided yet, but I don't think Graham Mertz was going to come in here and lock up the job with his first scrimmage in spring. It's, that just wasn't going to happen, and and let's be honest, this is still an offense that's a work in progress because where the offensive line is at, which we'll get into with Micah Mazuka. Um, but let's talk about some more good that came out of the scrimmage. There was another injury that took place uh, this past week uh, with Keon Zipperer. Uh, unfortunately suffering a long-term knee injury that uh, is, is, looks like it's going to put him out for all 2023. So with that, a big opportunity for Arles Boardingham and Nick. He showed out in the scrimmage. Some other guys at the tight end spot made some plays. And, uh, you know, Xanders has been out, so this is an opportunity with Zip out now as well for those guys to step up. And I think Boardingham is going to have a role this season. Yeah, spring football is not good to the Gator tight ends. You go back, you know, a, a year ago, and Odom got hurt, and he's he's out again this year. And Elk Sniss was hurt last spring. Um, you got to put the, the tight ends in bubble wrap for spring camp, but it does give guys like Hayden um, Hanson a chance. Um, the Florida the Florida tight end room is deep. Um, you know, you get Tony Livingston, who was supposed to be in the last class. He's a freshman this year. Man, he um, looks great, Nick. We saw him walking across the field on pro day. That dude looks like an NFL prospect right now. I mean, he's yeah, he he's passes got, the look test. He's a guy though, kind of in that Max Brown vein, where he's a basketball player, was probably more of a basketball player than a football player. Sure. Didn't know if he was gonna be an offensive lineman or a tight end. He's a guy who's learning, I think, and, and still growing. Um, I, I think the biggest guy that that Florida will turn to is Arles Boardingham, and he his skill set gives you something that you didn't have. Last year with you know Griffin McDowell and uh, and Keon Zipper or, or, or Dante Zanders, um, I think Arles Boardingham is more of your complete package. He's he's definitely put in the work to be a blocker and to be able to put his hand in the dirt and, and be trusted in, you know in the running game. Um, and then obviously his size, speed, his catching radius, his hands, um, he, he can be an offensive weapon for you. It's just about how much did you learn last year? Cause you were injured so much last year. Did you kind of just check out because you were hurt or yeah. were you taking those mental reps and, and was that red shirt year productive? Uh, and, and we'll see, uh, we'll, we'll get the answer to that probably in the spring game. And then, you know, in fall camp. Absolutely. And, and you know, another guy that made a big play at the receiver position in the scrimmage was Marcus Burke. He had a long, uh, you know, catch and run, made some other plays as well, uh, one that set up a score. So it's good to see him and, and Mizell, some other guys in the mix now at, at receiver. Florida's running backs had a great day in the scrimmage, as you would expect. Uh, looks like those guys are getting more involved in the passing game, Nick. And Cam Carroll, that hype train got a little going with, with his highlight that came out from the scrimmage. And you read it first at Gators Online, folks. Way back at the beginning of the month, uh, we had a, in like a fourth or fifth practice report um, that Cam Carroll was going to be a factor based on what we had seen and some of the things uh, that we had heard. And I think that he was able to show that in the first scrimmage. Um, Florida's defensive line, just a- as a front, that whole front uh, did really well. Cam Jackson is going to be a dude. Um, and then Jason Marshall, as you reported, Nick didn't allow a reception. He's, you know, right now, you know, really, the, I think the only spot in the secondary that's that's been solidified because there's some guys injured and banged up. There's some position battles happening. So, uh, but Jason Marshall is, you know, we heard it from Corey Raymond that he's really taken a step, and I think that he showed that in the first scrimmage. Yeah, and, and cornerback's a spot that's uh, pretty banged up right now. You know, every every day, every practice report that we put out, we figure out who you know who is in non-contact, who's playing, who's not. Um, so cornerback's a place where there's been a bunch of opportunity, and, and I think Jalen Kimbers looked looked all right. Um, I think the move with Jaden Hill inside, I'm not sure. I love it. Do I? Maybe I like it. Um, he's probably had some good days and some bad days, but it's uh, is a brand new position. You're covering a totally different type of receiver when you're in the nickel than when you are when you're outside. So if you can get Jason Marshall to be, I think you know he he was very good his freshman year. 
And then we probably put an unrealistic expectation on him for his sophomore year. And then he didn't meet our unrealistic expectations. If he can just continue to progress and get better, um, he's a very good football player. And then Florida will need to find an answer across from him. And, yeah. and hopefully in my mind, I think that's Devin Moore, um, but he's just been in non-contact and, and been dealing and we've with seen, the, And we've seen Hill now also work in that corner. He's kind of doing yeah. both with between stars. So uh, I, I wouldn't rule out him maybe still starting there too. Yeah, I mean, that's that's something you probably just get him reps. If you are going to move him in, inside permanently, he needs the reps there because it's something he's never done. Um, but if if, you, if you're going to have a bunch of guys being injured, you know, hey, Jadarius Perkins is, is a guy that can play there as well, and you can slide Hill outside. You you need some versatility uh, in, in your quarterback, in your defensive background. Now, that's the good that came out of the scrimmage. Well, and- another, another one real quick is um, – we don't talk about him a lot, um, so I wanted to bring it up. Uh, TJ Searcy is probably the yes. the last to be mentioned of the defensive linemen, edge linebackers that, that have come in, um, but he's he's looked really, really good. And I think the big thing for him, he's a little bit um, on the slider side, is uh, Mike Peterson is really getting on him about run blocking and, and yeah. setting the edge and um, being you know a, a first and second down player, not just a third down player. So I think – uh, TJ Searcy had a sack or two in, in the scrimmage, and uh, he's a player to look at. You know, we talk about Will Norman all the time and Kelby Collins, but uh, I think TJ Searcy is quietly having a really nice spring. And it's going to be easier for him to play early as an edge player versus those guys and, you know, playing right up on the line. Um, but I look, there's been several freshmen that have uh, made an immediate impact this spring and I think have earned some playing time for the fall. So, um, now, one guy guy that I, I think we also need to mention in terms of that that good category is Shamar James. Um, he was a bright spot on Tuesday, and uh, you know he's had a really strong spring, showing that he's going to be you know one of the guys there. But it's unfortunate as we kind of get to the bad that came from the scrimmage that the Gators have been without Gerard Mitchell and Derek Wingo. Um, Wingo hasn't played at all. Mitchell's been limited and been in non contact, and those are the two guys that are. Uh, going to be making the calls and audibles on defense. And obviously, James is doing it too. And Scooby Williams has been getting that opportunity at inside linebacker. Remember, he was supposed to move uh, and start this spring at edge. And I think just out of necessity, um, because of the injuries, he's now been playing inside. You've also got Jaden Robinson, a true freshman that's getting some reps with the second team defense at inside linebacker. But because of those moving parts and some of those injuries, um, You know, it was a little bit of a mixed bag uh, for Austin Armstrong's unit in the scrimmage. Uh, According to Billy Napier, you know, he says that they were kind of up and down, hot and cold. They had really good times where they obviously forced some turnovers, which we'll get into, um, but other times where they struggled. And, you know, he credited or attributed it to the, the fact that they're playing all these different combinations of players and they're having to deal with these injuries. And he's having to remind his coaches, hey, um, this is part of the growing pains and, and part of what you go through in spring. Uh, you know, once we get to the season, there's only 11 guys that got to get on the field. Um, but this defense obviously is still a work in progress. You, you know, you lost 13 of 22 starters and, and some key guys on defense, both of your inside linebackers, both of your starting safeties, um, your defensive tackles. So uh, when when you have the guys that are, that are out, Miguel Mitchell is another one um, that are supposed to be replace those guys. It, it's going to have an impact when you have a scrimmage. Yeah, and and I think Trahada Mitchell is probably just they're probably just limiting his reps. He's a guy who had a bunch of injuries um, throughout his four year career. Um, he's already proven that he knows the defense. He came right in and, and practice one of spring was making the calls and checks of the yep. line, um, and, and he's someone. Hey, if he's been a little banged up uh, in 2022, something nagging starts to happen. Hey, you've already shown us, you know, the defense. Take yeah. some mental reps on the sideline. We don't need you to, you know, lose you for uh, for the entire season in spring. Um, sure. And, and I think there's other guys, you know, Jaden Robinson. I remember like when Antonio Morrison came in and, and, and he was an early enrollee and they just threw him behind somebody. Hey, follow him and go well, learn because you're going to have to play. Um, and I think the same thing happened with Jared Davis um, and, and Alex Anzalone. So uh, Jaden Robinson getting those second team reps. It's, hey, sit right behind Trajada and practice. See how he makes these calls. We're going to need you to do that. Maybe not next year, but but soon. So 
I like, I really like Jaden Robinson as a prospect. Um, I think I've seen him a little bit uh, suspect in times in, in passing, uh, you know, trying to cover tight ends and stuff, which, you know, looks familiar from what we've seen, but um, this, he's a, he's an old school type of middle linebacker who, who wants to put his forehead in your chest and, and play football, which, which I can appreciate. So, I'm feeling a little bit better, I think, about that interior linebacker spot um, than, than I was heading into spring. Now, uh, one last thing on this scrimmage, and then we'll kind of – Nick and I will kind of get into what we've learned at, at this point in the spring. But, um, you know, we'll get more into the offensive line in that segment, but just the fact that they've they've had the injuries and, and, and where they're at now, um, I just don't think that that – you know, it's, it's been great that they've gotten some some opportunities for the young offensive linemen. But because you you were losing four of your five starters up front, to me, it was so key for the guys that are going to be your starting five to get practice after practice out there together, gelling as a unit. And they have not been able to do that because of injuries. Um, again, it's presented opportunities for other guys, and, and we've learned some things about who's lining up where and, and where they're repping guys. But I just think that the fact that Mazuka's out Cam Waits is out, um, you know, Jalen Farmer's out. Uh, that's th that's not what you want uh, because I think all three of those guys would probably be starting um, along with Richie Leonard. So we'll get more into that. The last thing from the scrimmage that was really the ugly was the turnovers, obviously. Um, you know, even though I think <laughs> Anthony Richardson's uh, interceptions were put under a microscope last year, they actually, the Gators actually did really well with turnover margin in Napier's first season. They ranked – number two in the SEC, and 17th nationally at .62 per game. The offense only lost 14 total turnovers. That ranked second for fewest in the SEC. So they did a pretty good job taking care of the ball, especially Anthony Richardson during the second half of the season. So to hear Billy say they turned the ball over a handful of times in the first scrimmage is, you know, that's not what you want, and that's something that's going to have to get cleaned up. Uh, you know, and we, we heard from Graham Mertz last Saturday, Nick, he's battled turnover issues throughout his, uh, you know, Wisconsin career, but he did improve them last year. Um, you know, he, he went from 10 touchdowns and 11 picks in 2021 to 19 touchdowns and 10 interceptions, uh, this past season. So in, improvement there, but he said, you know, it's still, still gotta digits. be lower. Yeah. It's still double digits. He, he yeah, had a double, double, uh, a double, like, double last year. You know, he he's he said that that's got to improve. But, you know, again, that's something I think that to take away from that first scrimmage, the fact that there were multiple turnovers is uh, that's something they got to clean up. Yeah. Yeah. You, you don't need your quarterback uh, putting up double doubles. Uh, you'd like to see those interceptions in single digits. Um, the, you, want double, video, you want a double in the touchdown category. But. Yeah. Yeah. Just a double single. Maybe a double zero. <laughs> double zero would be awesome. Uh, but it'll take a double single. Um, it, that's that's something that's going to be. Uh, interesting to me and i've said it before i think you know graham mertz said to us he, he prides himself on his accuracy um his accuracy his completion percentage at least uh, went down every year he was at wisconsin so i think people when he came they were immediately like oh thank god uh, uh someone who's gonna throw a slant not like anthony and i'm like listen anthony did a lot of really good things that the offense needed to to him to do to be successful and um Graham has shown in the past that he's turnover prone and um, Florida had those turnover issues again. And you're going to be playing a lot better defenses every Saturday in the SEC with a lot faster people. Um, yeah. No disrespect to, to Rutgers in Maryland. I don't think they have <laughs> SEC defenses uh, at those two institutions. So um, it, it's going to be if, if Graham Mertz does win the job turnovers are going to be a huge thing. And I think if Florida can get the offensive line right, and then like you said, I think Mike Mazuka is a starter. I think Cam Waits has the potential to be a starter. These guys aren't even around right now. Yeah. If Florida is going to go up to its identity. Graham Mertz is going to be a game manager that exists between the center and the running back and then hits enough passes to keep defensive defenses honest. I don't think yeah. that Graham Mertz – wins you a lot of football games like Anthony Richardson won the Utah game I don't think Graham Mertz wins you a bunch of games but I don't think he's going to do a lot of things that will lose you games you know the the three interception games or, or fumbles that Anthony Richardson had that the Kentucky game where you think he put too much on his shoulders so 
I think Graham Mertz is kind of a manager, but you have to get all the pieces around him healthy and right so that he can manage it. You can't, yeah. uh, you need everyone showing up to their shift for, for the manager to, uh, yeah. put people in, in the different aisles. You can't have, uh, you know, eight people not showing up to work and then blame it on the manager. What's up, Florida fans? Wanted to encourage all of you to go check out rogueshop.com if you have issues sleeping, chronic pain, and or anxiety and stress. Rogue Shop sells CBD, THC, edibles, smokables, and vapes, as well as handcrafted bath salts, soaps, candles, massage oils, pain creams, and topicals. Rogue Shop is a true small business, disabled, veteran-owned, black-owned, woman-owned company. They have five employees and make all of their products with their own cannabis grown in their manufacturing facility. Visit rogueshop.com. That's R-O-G-U-E-S-H-O-P.com. Well, yeah, that would not be good. Uh, and and uh, the Gators have been showing up to work all spring, Nick. We are now nine practices in and uh the gators will have a, a another scrimmage coming up soon and then they will conclude camp with the orange and blue game uh on a thursday april 13th and um you know at this point nick i think you and i have a pretty good feel for this team for this roster and personnel uh for the depth chart and uh you know definitely you know, we mentioned at the top of the show but once again um you know shout out to rick hurtado and and you know florida's sids matt hutchinson and all those guys for just you know we've got to see a lot especially this week nick uh in terms of practice and it's, it's great for us just to have that knowledge of the team uh mm -hmm. to be able to give you guys insight to what we've seen at practice and and where this roster is really at and i think um you know we can go a, a lot of places here and, and start with a lot of subjects nick but i'll let you you know kick us off i mean what do you feel like you've learned about this team in camp uh you know to start us off what jumps out you know whether it's spit specific position or side of the ball or battle that we've been uh, eyeing? Yeah, I think um, I, I question Cam Carroll's uh, sanity or or, <laughs> or, or, or hey, I wondered if he was concussed. I was like, why would you come to this running back room if you only have one year left? Like these dudes had 1,500 yards, 16 touchdowns combined. What are you doing? This is not the room to come to <laughs> for your last year. Um, and he showed me that maybe I have the concussion because he's looked fantastic. And um, I think he can give you a little bit in the passing game. Um, but, you know, from the clip that Florida put out, he, he's a tough tackle. And I think Miguel mm -hmm. Mitchell wasn't uh, wasn't ready for that coming down into the hole, meeting Cam Carroll. That's a grown man. That's <laughs> a grown man that you try to tackle there. So I think looking at, at him, he can be – I think Florida has – four good running backs, but three really good running backs. I think Trayon Webb will be good, but right now you've got Trell Etienne and, and Cam Carroll. Um, if he's fresh in the fourth quarter and, and Montrell and, and Etienne have, let's say, 15 carries apiece, this is a this is a young man that you don't want to be uh, in the fourth quarter trying to tackle when he's uh, on his third carry of the game and on fresh legs. So I think I learned a lot about that, that Florida's running back room. Um and then I think the big, the biggest thing for me, I won't go too in, into it because I talked about it earlier, is the defensive line. I think that Florida's defensive line is in a much better place right now than they were this time last year. Yeah, and, and I think to 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 expand on that point, Nick, um, you know, there, there's a lot of guys that that contribute to that. Um, you know, I, I think that there's a chance that we could see both of the defensive linemen that they added from the portal, Caleb Banks and Cam Jackson, be your starters along the defensive line. Uh, I think that that's something that could happen. Um, you know, obviously you've got Des Watson and, and Tyreek Sapp in there as well. But you mentioned Cam Carroll. And I think that he is one of several transfers that we've learned in camp um, have basically come in and, and assumed the roles that we expected them to. And, you know, we heard from the staff and certainly from folks within the program who felt like, the transfers that they were going to bring in were not only going to, you know, make an immediate impact, but but up potentially upgrade the Gators at some spots. And, you know, you look at the roster and, and you look at what we've seen from all the practices so far. There is a lot of these transfers that came in, 10 total, who are going to play prominent roles and starting roles for the Gators uh, this, this fall. I mean, you look at, obviously, uh, at the quarterback spot with Graham Mertz, 
he could be your starter. Um, and hey, the other guy that that might start uh, also also a transfer. transfer as well. Yeah. Um, you know, Cam Carroll is going to be a factor in the running back rotation. That's another transfer that you've added. Um, and then you look at the offensive line. I mean, Mazuka's out. Uh, but had he he not been hurt, that's one of your starters. And then you got a battle going on at right tackle between two of the transfers that you brought in and, and Goodwin um, and George. So, you know, one of those guys is going to end up with a nod there at right tackle. Mm -hmm. And then on the other side, I mean, Cam Jackson has been a dude. Mm -hmm. He's been one of the standouts of the spring on defense, and he's definitely going to be one of your starters, um, you know, I think a defensive tackle. So you, you add him, you add Caleb Banks. Um, and then, you know, we mentioned Mitchell, who's been in non-contact, but he's kind of stepped in and tried to fill some of the shoes um, in the void that's been left by Miller and Amari Bernie at linebacker. Um, so all, a lot of these guys have come in, Nick, and, and kind of just step right in. Mm -hmm. And as, as Napier described with Mertz, and I think this applies to a lot of other guys, it's kind of like you're adding a, a, a you know, free agent in NFL, you know, in NFL trading and, uh, you're able to bring in a guy that has experience that you kind of know that you can plug right in, and that's what Florida's fortunately it seems been able to do at some spots this spring. Yeah, and and there a lot of people were down on Florida's uh, transfer portal class because I, some of the maybe some of the more high profile names and FSU did a really good job getting those high profile names names you uh, recognized uh, either from recruiting or from what they had done in college. But I think everyone that Florida brought in. Um, for the most part is, is a guy who came in at a position of need and, and is showing that, Hey, that was a good pick. Um, yep. Now the port, the portal is going to be opening here uh, <laughs> again in, in about two weeks, right after the spring game. And, and I think Florida still has major needs they need to address. I think, you know, we can run through them real quick. I think you need another safety, someone with some experience, a potential starter at safety. I think you need another quarterback and we get a lot of questions well, are they just trying to get one for depth or are they trying to get someone who can start? Listen, if if someone who can start, if Caleb, if Caleb, um, shoot, I'm forgetting his name. Uh, if USC's quarterback goes in the transfer portal and wants to come to Florida, like you don't say, no, oh, you know what? Sorry, we don't we don't want that kind of competition. We're just looking for someone to fill a jersey and, and sit in, in a spot on the depth chart. You, you get the best available you can. You only have three scholarship quarterbacks you would like to get to four. Um, so I think Florida's in the market for a quarterback. I think you need another outside receiver, potentially an outside corner. You could use it. We're seeing it right now. You can never have enough offensive linemen because because that's a position where you can get rolled up on. I think you can get another offensive lineman and, and another edge player. Um, I really like the young guys they have there, Collins and Searcy. Um, but outside of that, you just have um, – Antoine Powell and, and Jack Pyburn. So I think yeah. that's – and Prince Umamielin. Uh, but that's a position where, where you could have, um, you know, uh, if you can, if you have a, a stud to go after, that's a position that could use uh, some, some high-end talent. And obviously a lot of high-end talent that came in from the Gators 2023 class, 17 of them uh, enrolled early, which is just an insane – number to have that many guys show up mid-year and of those 17 nick countless i mean several of them have shown up this spring whether they're uh potentially getting opportunities to run with the starters or whether they've already kind of carved out some backup roles for themselves like so far from camp we've seen that there are going to be several freshmen from this early enrollee crop that that make an immediate impact in, in the fall um there, there's a lot of guys that we can talk about, Nick. I'm, you, know, you can mention some that jump out to you, but um, one that I think maybe doesn't get talked about as much is Jordan Castell, um, mm -hmm. you know, defensive back, uh, playing the safety spot, a guy that's really rangy in the secondary, was a cornerback in high school, can kind of line up really anywhere uh, on the back end. And now with Miguel Mitchell being banged up, He's got some opportunities with the starters, Nick, and he's out there <laughs> running with the first team at safety and, and, and kind of learning on the fly. And I, you know, I they've got a lot of options at safety, so I don't think that he would be getting that opportunity if they didn't feel like he was ready. Yeah, I think the equipment manager or Billy uh, did did my guys wrong. Uh, you know, giving a, a safety number fourteen 
which is what Jordan Castell wears in, in, in eight in Bryce Thornton 18. We were watching, we've been watching practice, Zach, and, and I'm looking out there and I'm like, those are not safety numbers. <laughs> I feel like they were just uh whatever was left. And and, and uh unless hey, unless that those are those guys' numbers and it holds some significance to them. But I'm just looking at them like 14, 18 kind of looks weird. Yeah. Uh, you know, back there uh, at the back end of the defense. Now we we us we we mentioned some of the guys already on this show. Uh, you know, Jaden Robinson, T.J. Searcy, Aiden Mizell had the had the big touchdown catch. Um, you know, Jakeem Jackson is another one that uh, has has come up throughout camp. He made an interception in in the scrimmage as well. Um, but I want to highlight two guys specifically because I think that we've certainly learned a lot about them and also where Florida's offensive line stands because of the injuries to Micah Mazuka and some of the other guys at the guard spot. Now, coming in, we thought, okay, just based on the recruiting and where they were rated, uh, that Najee Harris would be coming in to play mm-hmm. center and Roger Kearney would be coming in to play guard. It's been the opposite. Uh, you've got Roger Ker- uh, Kearney repping at center and repping with the second team center uh, as the second team center. And then you've got Najee Harris, not just at guard. My man's running with the starters, Nick. Um, and, and they're giving him some opportunities, number 77 out there uh, because of the injuries. And, and he's obviously making the most of it. He's, he's certainly learning um, because he should be in high school right now. But the fact that they are putting that guy in that spot already, I, I think is an encouraging sign to see early on. Yeah, it's a tough position. That's a yeah. really tough position to to have to come in and play anywhere on the offensive line. Uh, you know, it, it's helpful if you have uh, some veterans to uh, – if you're an interior guy and you have some veterans on either side, which you certainly do um, if you're playing, you know, guard. You certainly have Kingsley, uh, who's played a ton of football for Florida. Um, and then I think Keontae Goodwin is a guy that will end up winning that job at right tackle. Um but it'll be interesting to see when you get Cam Waits back. Um, he's a guy that they moved to guard last year during the season. Does he stay at guard? Does he go back to tackle? I think if you're looking at Keontae Goodwin and Austin Barber, your tackles might be pretty set. Um, and, and if Mike Mazuka comes back healthy and ready to go, I think that's your left guard. Um, and now we're does he? At- I mean, I mean, they were Nick. I'm, Billy said they're hopeful that he comes back by fall training camp. I mean, we'll see. Mm-hmm. Um, don't want to get into the specifics of his injury, but it's you know it's going to be something that he's going to have to rehab from. Um, so, look, Christian Williams is another guy that's been getting some opportunities there um, at the guard spot. You know, Riley Simmons um, is also kind of a, a, a veteran there. So, um, it, you know, Jalen Farmer too. I don't forget about Jalen Farmer. He he was listed as Osiris Torrance's backup for four weeks last season. And, you know, he, he has been banged up. He's been non-contact all spring. Um, but we did hear from Rob Sale that he is expected to return by the end of camp. So getting him in there for hopefully some practices and certainly for the spring game would be big. Um, but then I think, you know, Nick, you, know, you look at obviously where the Gators are on the offensive line. Um, there is enough depth there. I didn't really, you know, ever consider that spot being one that they would need to address during the second portal period. But after all these injuries that they've gone through, uh, I mean, I'm not so sure. I think if there's one that, that pops up, that makes sense. Um, and if you don't feel like you're going to get Mizuka back in time or Cam Waits back in time, and you just, you just want to have another guy there that you can feel comfortable, I wouldn't rule it out at all. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I think what we're seeing now is the, they're making Kingsley earn that that position, um, and, and you've got those young bucks who they're coming in ready to play. So I think it, it's good competition for a guy like Kingsley who's been here for for three years, four you going on four years um, to have to um, earn it. Like, hey, I mean, you've been here a while, but this kid just came from high school, and, and he would also like to start, and, he, and he's going to push you. So I think that's good. Um, Florida's got talent there, but you know it's just. Jake Slaughter has been at, been at Florida for going on three years, and and we haven't he's really played seen in fourteen much of career games, and, uh, and, Riley, and, and they and they've mostly been at center, but now he's playing guard. Yeah, and, and Riley Simmons is another guy. Uh, there's just a bunch of guys who do you feel great about if they get put into the game? And and I'm, I can't say yes or no. We just don't know because we haven't seen enough of them. Um, yeah. But 
I, I think when you look at the injuries and, and the way things can happen on the offensive line, if, if you have an opportunity to bring somebody else in, come on down, buddy. Listen, the, the <laughs> spots, the spots are open. And because right now it's kind of whoever's healthy is playing. Yeah. And, and, Fortunately for the Gators, even though they got Xanders and, and Zip out, they got enough healthy guys at tight end uh, that you know they they can still put two on the field at times. And um, it looks like Boardingham is making the most of this opportunity. Uh, you saw Hayden Hansen in practice this week, Nick, and we're just like, yo, this dude's gonna just be able to just maul people, given his size. Um, you know, obviously still a young guy, but you know certainly a lot to like about him. And then we mentioned. Tony Livingston that just looked like a million bucks, you know, fresh off that basketball court. So the Gators got some dudes there, Nick. Um, you know, I, I think that it would be great for them to be able to get more out of that tight end position this season in terms of production and the passing game. And I think that Boardingham is going to provide that. Uh, obviously, you know, Zipper had his moments last year before he got hurt. Um, so I, I think he's another one that could potentially do it. But I'm excited to see – boarding him and and him be the guy that i think you know we've we've heard the some of the players on the team say um he's a guy that knows how to get open yeah and, and the tight end position was not uh, a huge offensive threat last year played a big role uh in in the team mainly mainly as blocking um a lot yeah of they wouldn't have rushed for that, all those yards without those tight ends <laughs> that's true that's true so shout out to them there's more than than just catching uh catching passes and scoring touchdowns um it will be interesting to see you know, Keon Zipper, I think we all had in, in mind that he was kind of like an H-back when he was coming in, and he's someone who's really taken to blocking. Um, Xanders, uh, we saw him, you know, with, with a shoulder injury. So how serious is that? Does he come back? I think he's kind of just held down, well, you know, just a steady player that's held down a starting role. Um, and, and you need to see one of these younger guys, one of these retro freshmen step up, whether it's Hayden or Arliss. Um you need a, a, a dual threat, a guy yep. that you can, tr can trust. You're not going to get on the field if you can't block. Um, so these guys that are better uh, better offensive weapons, you, you got to learn how to block or else you're not going to get the opportunity to show, um, you know, that, that you are that X factor, that, that uh, dual threat as a tight end. Well, Nick, Anthony Richardson showed this week that he is certainly the X factor at the quarterback position. Um, no surprise as he showed up uh, to Florida's indoor practice facility on Thursday and uh, put on a show for his final time, basically representing the Gators uh, in the orange and blue. And um, didn't have to work out, didn't have to throw, uh, but that's not his M.O. And he went out there and let some balls fly, did a backflip, and um, I think more than anything, had fun out there. You know, the guy even raised the roof, Nick. They need to raise the roof. Um, so <laughs> sixty that, feet. Yeah, that throw. That throw is is something. And obviously, it doesn't look great. Um, you know, it's, it's a little funny. Um, they Florida released a video that showed Anthony saying, "You're like, oh, that's gonna go viral." And I think it did go viral yesterday. Um, that's a that's a hard throw. That, that's a hard pillar to hit. I think that was like <laughs> from where he was standing. That pillar was 30, 35 yards away. And then, and then we were told yesterday the roof is sixty feet up in the air. So yeah, um, that ball was going to go go away. Is and Anthony joked that Will Levis hit the ceiling at his pro day, and he was trying to throw it through the ceiling. Um, I think I think the biggest thing that I took away is I don't think Anthony Richardson's passing day helped his stock hugely, and I don't think it hurt it at all. I think Anthony Richardson is going to be at worst a top ten pick. Um, I, I think the Seahawks at five make a lot of sense. Uh, a team could go up to get him. I think that would make a lot of sense. Um, and uh, like you said, I think he came out yesterday and was just having fun, um, yep. helping his guys out, Jordan Pouncey, Justin Shorter. Um, he got some help from uh, Caleb Douglas and Xavier Henderson. Um, shout out to those two guys because they had practice after that. They ran you yeah. know, about – about 20, 20 routes for AR and then had to go and go through a two and a half hour practice. Um, but I think pro day for AR was you sit on the numbers that you had at the combine because you had a historic combine for a quarterback. Um, and, and then, you know, pro day is just about going to having fun. This, uh, th this is the one right here. Let it ride. I yeah. Think he threw, he threw this ball to Jesus, Zach. <laughs> 
And look, I mean, it, this this was let's call it like it was. I put it in my headline. I mean, this is this was a victory lap for Anthony mm-hmm. Richardson. Uh, I mean, this is what it was. I mean, at this point in the process, he's already proved himself. Um, I, I think I would be shocked. I would be shocked if Anthony Richardson gets out of the top five based on the teams that showed up to his pro day on Thursday because you had more than 80 NFL staff members in attendance, all 32 teams, but there were three that sent their head coaches. Um, you had Pete Carroll there for Seattle, Doug Bye. Peterson. Um, I don't think Carroll- Doug, I, I don't think the Jags are in. Uh- I don't think the Jags are in uh, in the quarterback market. I think they're, no, think they're, they're locked up. Uh, but Carolina certainly is, and they, yep. they sent several coaches there, including their head coach, Frank Wright. Um, you know, the Colts had some staff there as well. So, I mean, between Carolina, between Indianapolis, and between Seattle, which, you know, I know my son is a Seahawks fan, is hoping that's where he lands. I, but I, I don't know if he'll last that long. Um, I, I don't expect the Panthers to pick him number one overall, but I mean, man, the the amount of folks that they brought, I mean, they had, you know, not just Frank Wright, but they had Josh McCown there. They had Jim uh, Caldwell, former NFL coach. I mean, uh, they showed up with their whole staff to really evaluate AR. Um, so uh, we'll, we'll see how this plays out. He, he said basically, hey, I don't know where I'm going to go. Uh, He's just soaking up the process. You know, he thought that it might be, you know, a little bit stressful for him at times, but he's, he said, really, it's just been uh, fun. And he's he's enjoyed going through it. Obviously, the way that his stock has shot up, uh, you know, throughout this, I think, has made it fun. And, uh, you know, as, as Billy Napier said, I mean, this was a guy that bet on himself because mm-hmm. at the end of the day, he was still just a first-year starter who had an inconsistent season and not a lot of tape, you know, beyond that. So, he knew that going into this process that there were a lot of teams that needed a quarterback and that once he was going to go out there and test and go through these interviews that he was going to kill it. And uh, he's proved himself right, Nick, and that decision is going to pay off big time on April 27th. Yeah, uh, and if you've been listening to this show uh, or reading <laughs> what we were saying uh, since, shoot, August, um, none of this is surprising to you. Oh, we uh, – we kind of saw this coming and uh, especially the numbers and things like that, that, that he put out. Uh, so we were obviously looking for numbers as well from some of the other players. The Gators had a uh, 11 total guys from last year's team that went through pro day. Some very important, uh, you know, workouts for guys like Amari Bernie and Richard garage who didn't get an opportunity to do the NFL combine. Uh, I thought Bernie ran some great times in the 40 yard dash, Nick. And, um, you know, I, I think he's going to get a shot somewhere. I definitely hope he gets a shot because um, he's definitely one of the dudes that you want in, your, in the locker room. And I think between his athleticism and speed, his experience in the SEC, and then, mm-hmm. um, you know, his smarts as a football player with his football IQ, um, I hope he gets an opportunity. I think it could happen. Yeah, I think he's a player that will play and can play on all four special teams. Um, his four five four four five three unofficial. Um and, and then working out with the defensive backs, I think maybe shows you, hey, he came in as a as a as safety and probably should have stayed there, um, at, you know, a little undersized in the linebacker position. Um, it'll be interesting to see how a team projects him. Obviously, he was told something or told or asked to work out with the defensive backs and, and do those back pedals and do their drills. So um, that to me is telling. And then that forty time is not a linebacker forty time. Nope. Nope. It is not, and he's a guy that obviously played defensive back uh, for several years uh, during his early in his UF career, uh, started at star, played some safety. So, um, again, he's a guy that's got some athleticism, and, and to me, he is um, he's the only one I guess I'm sh- unsure about uh, as far as getting drafted, Nick. I think all the, you know, the other guys um, that have, have gone through this process uh, including Richard Garage, all the guys that were invited to the combine. Um, I mean, I think they're going to get drafted. Uh, yeah, and- I, 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 I would say Cox, Dean, Dexter, Garage. Um, I, I don't see Jordan Pouncey um, or really Rashad Torrance getting drafted. Um, 
I, I think Rashad Torrance would have been better served coming back to school, whether whether it was Florida or transfer portal. I think he he doesn't have enough on tape, and and then certainly when you look at the the, the testing numbers he's put up, um, they have not been good. So I think Florida will have a lot of guys drafted, um, but I think those, those that I named, I I would be surprised uh, to if they, if I heard their names called. Yeah, I mean Torrance is the one, and he he came in wanting to improve his forty time, and, and really wasn't able to do that. Um, but he has been uh, talked to him. I talked to him after his workout. He has been, you know, meeting with teams and going through the process and, and setting up interviews. So there's definitely interest there. Um, and if, and if and if he's a guy that can get drafted, Nick, I mean, there is a chance. There is a chance. Uh, if you count Brenton Cox. <laughs> Uh, there's a chance, Nick, that they can sure, believe me. Believe you me, they will count him if he gets drafted. Florida will count him, uh, add him to the list of Gators in the NFL. I mean, they could have 10 guys drafted potentially, you know, Richardson, Bernie, or excuse me, well, let's say for sure, uh, Richardson, Cox, Dean, Dexter, Garage, um, Shorter, Torrance. That'll give them eight, and then it would really be on Rashad Torrance and Amari Bernie if if uh, they can get the Gators up there. Nine is the most that they've ever had since the NFL draft uh, went to seven rounds in 1994. Um, they had nine draft picks in 2007, nine draft picks in 2010. Um, the most that they've uh, ever had uh, was ten. And that was back in 1978 when the NFL draft was 12 rounds. So, um, you know, I, I don't think they'll get 10. It's possible. I think maybe eight or nine is more likely, as, as Nick said. But I think for a lot of these guys, like, you know, Osiris Torrance and, and Jervon Dexter, um, I think they, they cemented their draft stock. And this was a big day for Garage as well. He was out there moving in that 40, Nick. Big man 40. And, and- – Gators, Gator fans, listen to me. Do not let yourself get trolled. If Florida does get eight, nine, ten guys, that the the rival fans are coming to tell you that Billy Napier had a six and seven season with a ton of NFL talent. <laughs> Just know that that's what is going to be said to you. Be ready for that. Don't get trolled. Don't complain about it. Um, but I, I think it was it was a good pro day. Uh, a lot of guys had such good combines they they were able to just sit on their numbers. You know, um, G. Uh, Gervon Dexter was really able to just kind of uh, do his position drills. Um, and, and one guy I don't think that really helped himself was uh, was Brenton Cox. Um, thought he was okay at the combine, and then you know you really have you have the unofficial time that we got, but your your forty time is the same as. Gervon Dexter, you're an edge. You're a speed guy. This is a defensive tackle guy who's played some nose. You shouldn't be running the same speed as him. So uh, I think the biggest thing for Brenton Cox is not on the field. He's going to have to answer questions. Hey, all you're so talented. You're so physically gifted. Where is that production? Where are those production numbers? Sure. And then he has to answer for why are you kicked off a team? Um Potentially two teams. What happened to Georgia where you kicked off that team? The, he's going to have to really kind of hammer home and and, and nail this interview process, uh, you know, as teams start to bring him in. Well, speaking of nails, um, the Gators had to use some drills this week, Nick, to uh, get outside that sidewalk at uh, Ben Hill Griffin Stadium and uh, have Osiris Torrance be enshrined forever, as you wrote at, at Gators Online. Um, the 72nd player in school history, the first ever offensive guard to uh, have his name cemented into Florida football history outside of the swamp. He uh, received his All-American brick on Wednesday. Nick was on hand for the ceremony. And um, I, I think a cool moment, uh, certainly for him, certainly for the program. And look, there, uh, you know, was was not a lot of, you know, great that came from the season. But I think one thing that you could take away was Osiris Torrance in the season that he had. I mean, Nick, the way that that guy was mauling people every week, we we would have thought that he was knocking back maybe four or five shots of vitamin <laughs> energy and just uh, <laughs> just just coming out there with uh, with bad intentions. Um, 
you know, as as we get into this week's segment, prevented by uh, Vitamin Energy, certainly a, 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 sponsor, a sponsor that we appreciate and all that they've done for our show at Gators Online, uh, a naturally caffeinated drink that you guys can use for, you know, a variety of, uh, uh, you know, functions and, and things that you're looking for, whether you're trying to work out, whether you're trying to focus, uh, whether you need to burn the midnight oil, uh, they've got all different types of, you know, drinks that you can use. And the bit, the best thing is that there's not a crash. There's no jitters that you get afterward. So uh, I definitely would encourage you guys to try this at vitaminenergy.com. I know Nick and I have uh, both been enjoying it now for over a month. And use our code GATORSBOGO. Uh, save yourself some money. Get yourself some more product. Um, I'm, I'm starting to run out, so I'm going to have to ask them for more, Zach. Yeah, and uh, look, you know, obviously the Gators are going to have to uh, – have a lot that they're going to need to replace in, in Osiris Torrance and he's, as he moves on to the NFL. Um, this is going to be a guy that also is probably going to hear his name called in the first round, and I, I think that he was able to probably uh, cement that, uh, pun intended, uh, with his performance yeah. at Pro Day. But, uh, you know, this is this is a guy that came in, Nick, and, um, you know, had all-American potential, and you would have never known talking to the guy. Um, yeah. Just the most humble – um, you know, non-assuming dude. I mean, he was awesome to have on the Gators online show and uh, just get to know throughout his career. Um, a guy that, you know, got into the sport late, almost quit football, had a lot of people in his life, including his, his former high school coach, Nick, that you talked to this week that kind of pushed him to this point. And certainly Billy Napier and, 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 and Rob Sale bringing him in as a, as a recruit that, as Billy admits, they probably should not have had, um, but to develop from what he you know, was as a freshman and, and starting out at Louisiana to now being a, a first-team All-American at, at Florida, uh, again, there weren't many bright spots and silver linings in the season. Uh, that was 2022, but Osiris Torrance was certainly one of them. Yeah, and uh, it, it was a great story, and, and I think we were probably – he's probably the, one of the first ones to hear it and, and to be able to you know help share it um, because we had him on the, the show so early on. Um, but then talking to his coach, his coach was was great to talk to. He said, listen, I was a first year head coach. I was trying to build a program that had that from scratch, from the ground. He goes, and I see this kid walking around. I'm like, eh, that can help. Um, <laughs> Osiris Torrance was 418 pounds. Um, and this is a school that was like K through 12. So he's in eighth grade. And this coach is trying to talk this kid into playing some football. Didn't want to do it. Had no intentions of doing it. Started playing football as a diet plan, um, <laughs> and, and the coach and, and coach Brandon Brown told me he said I was hard on these kids because I was trying I was trying not to lose my job. Uh, I, I needed to get them in shape, and he said oh, Cyrus Torrance just showed up every day. Um, would show up, wanted to quit. Coach would not let him quit on himself or or on football, and um, it's it's going to make him a millionaire. Uh, it started as a diet plan, and. And now it's going to make him a millionaire. 1,500 pass blocking snaps in his career. 1,501 to be precise. Zero sacks. Mm. That's I, I still can't get over that stat uh, every time I read it, every time I see it, and, and especially the fact that he did it his last year in the SEC. Well, um, I, I also haven't given up a stack. Um, that, that's true. No, no, no snaps, but I haven't given up a sack either. So that's something Osiris and I have in common. But you don't have the breaking common. No, 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 no. I, I should get one then. <laughs> I haven't given you, up a sack either. You would need a lot of vitamin energy shots to be able to block. Like <laughs> um, so congratulations to him again. It was it was a pleasure to get to know him this past year and uh, certainly going to help. Uh, Rob Sale and, and Darnell Stapleton on the recruiting trail when they're trying to get offensive linemen. Uh, hey, we showed up here one year and uh, we put a brick in the ground. Uh, mm -hmm. Come play offensive line for us. <laughs> it's not doesn't, a bad recruiting print. Doesn't hurt recruiting, that's for sure. Um, so, and as we wrap up this week's uh, Gators Online show, definitely want to uh, mention the baseball matchup this weekend in town between the Gators and Auburn. Uh, been on the road. Lately, Nick, but this team comes back home and, uh, you know, gets another matchup here in Condren uh, Ballpark. Yeah, for a perfect 4-0 uh, last week on the road. Uh, you, you get a come-from-behind win at Tallahassee uh, over, the, over the Knolls with a great eighth inning, and then you go on the road and sweep the defending national champions. Now, listen, Ole Miss, 
um, is is not the same team that they were last year, but it's tough to win games and really tough to win a series on the road, let alone sweep. So Florida comes home, uh, happy to be home. They missed their midweek game. Tuesday was rained out in Jacksonville against Florida State. That'll be, I think, made up in May. Um, but you get a 17-7 and Auburn Tiger team, just 2-4 and four in the SEC. But this is a team, I think, that will challenge the Gator Bats, which have been so good. Um, really strong starting pitching. They'll throw Will Cannon on Friday. Uh, he's 2-0 and with a sub-2-3 ERA. John Armstrong is 5-0 and on Saturday. Uh, and then a lefty in Tommy Vale, who's 2-1 and with a 3-5-7 ERA on Sunday. This is not a – it's the SEC. There's no team you can overlook. Um, and while Auburn isn't – um, you know, the LSU or Vanderbilt or Tennessee, um, it's a team that if you don't take them seriously, can come in here, um, shut your bats down and, and take two out of three. So Florida's positioned themselves really well, number three in the country right now. Um, and, and I'm looking to see this week really a bounce back from the starting pitching. The starting pitching have been so solid and so good um, this year. Last weekend, uh, you didn't get the starts you thought, and it didn't matter because the bullpen showed up. So that's something that this Florida team has done really well. The bullpen had struggled early on and, and wasted some really good starts from, from Brandon Sprout and Hurston Waldrip, uh, but the bats picked them up. In, in yep. some of the games where the bats only scored a couple runs, you got a, a, you know, a, a, a one-hit shutout from Brandon Sprout. <laughs> um at home and, and Hurston Waldrop, uh, you know, is probably, if you're listening to this, Hurston Waldrop's probably struck you out at least once. Um, so it, it's, it's a, a bounce back weekend that I'm looking for from the starting pitching. Um, and you got to keep, keep the bats rolling. Um, this team has been a lot of fun uh, to cover because they hit, they hit the baseball. Yeah. And obviously they want to keep the bats rolling as well with the softball team. <laughs> They'll be on the road uh, this weekend at South Carolina. So much Gator sports going on this weekend, folks. Uh, you got gymnastics uh, kicking things off with the, the NCAA regional action. Um, you got lacrosse action going down, um, you know, and, and obviously track and field taking place with the uh, the Pepsi relays here in town. So a lot to do in Gainesville in terms of Gator sports. And uh, Nick and I will be obviously back on the practice field Wednesday or excuse me, Saturday. Uh, we'll be out there as, as Wednesday, too. Um, but uh, we'll be out there on Saturday as the Gators continue spring uh camp and uh, inch closer to the orange and blue game on april 13th so um we'll be back with you guys next week with all the updates from uh practice and where things are on the recruiting front obviously some more visits coming up so make sure you guys stay locked with gators online and all of our coverage on the team side and recruiting side for nick del torre i'm zach albaverde